Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. Navigating the cyber battlefield, leveraging mitre attack tactics and techniques. I am Rintika Chakraborty and I will be your host for the day. Before we get started, we would like to go over a few house rules for our attendees. The session will be in listen only mode and will last for an hour out of which last 10 minutes will be dedicated to q a if you have any questions during the webinar to the organizers or our speaker use the q a window also if you face any audio video challenges please check your internet connections or you may log out and log in again and very important announcement for our attendees as a commitment to closing the cybersecurity workforce gap by creating multi-domain cyber techn technicians, EC Council pledges $3.5 million towards CCT education and certification scholarships to certify approximately 10,000 cyber professionals ready to contribute to the industry. Did you know that you can be part of the lucrative cybersecurity industry? Even top companies, like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, Facebook, and Dell all hire cybersecurity professionals. The cybersecurity industry has a 0% unemployment rate. The average salary for an entry-level cybersecurity job is about $100,000 per year in the United States. Furthermore, you don't need to know coding and learn from your home, and you get a scholarship to kickstart your career. Apply now. EC Council is pledging a $3.5 million CCT scholarship for cybersecurity career starters. Scan the QR code on the screen to apply for the scholarship. Fill out the form. If you want to know more, kindly visit our website given in the chat section. Also, we would like to announce to our audience about the special handouts. Take the screenshot of the running webinar and post in your social media, LinkedIn or Twitter, tagging EC Council and use the hashtag CyberTalks. We will share free handouts to our first 15 attendees. Now about our speaker. Sergey is a security and cloud expert and instructor with more than 15 years of experience in Microsoft technologies. His day-to-day -day job is to help companies securely embrace cloud technologies. He has certifications and recognitions such as Microsoft MVP Security, OSCP, OSEP, ECPPT, ECPTX, Microsoft Certified Trainer, MCT Rec Regional Lead, EC Councils, CES, CPENT, LPT, CCSC, and many more. Sergey often speaks at local and international conferences like Global Azure, DEF CON, Black Hat Europe, Wild West Hacking Fest, uh, Security Beside, Workplace Ninja, and many more. So without any further delay, right now I'm giving the mic to your survey. Cool, thank you. All right, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are going to start um, another session. I mean, another if you have been to the previous sessions. Um, what we're going to do um, today, thanks, th thanks Ritika for introduction. I don't need to do it again. Uh, so let me quickly tell you what we're going to do, and then I'm going to jump to, as usual, to demos. So uh, we are talk uh, today. Uh, we're, I'm going to cover MITRE attack. So leveraging MITRE attack tactics and techniques. Um, so uh, what this session is all about? I'm going to give you a look and feel of MITRE attack because MITRE attack is super useful if you work in cybersecurity, regardless of your role. So if you work work in blue team, I mean your your job role somewhere in the blue on the blue area or red area doesn't really matter so which kind of team you're a member of. Uh, you must understand MITRE attacks. You must know what tactics and techniques are available and how to use them. It, it, of course, depends on your role. You will use MITRE attack in a different manner, uh, but you still need to be aware of MITRE attack. So um, 
if you've been to my previous sessions, you know that I prefer live demos. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you um, all MITRE attack tactics. So again, um, the goal of the session is to give you a look and feel. So not just give you some kind of words about MITRE attack, but show you how it may look like if uh, attacker really is going to uh, get into the company. So I'm going to show you all of those MITRE attack stages. Um, so, but before that, let me show you one slide about MITRE attack in general. So MITRE attack is the globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics. So each tactic has a number of techniques. Um, and so all of those techniques based on the real world observations. So um, generally speaking, MITRE attack, that's the way how attackers can compromise the company. And so all of those attacks are grouped together uh, to the different stages, different phases of, of, of cyber attack. So MITRE attack knowledge base, is, knowledge base is used as a foundation for the development of specific threat models and methodologies. So and MITRE attack actively used by red teams and blue teams as well. So regardless of your role, really, if, you, if your role is like, you know, SOC analyst, you must know cyber attack tactics and techniques. Oh, sorry, MITRE attack tactics and techniques. Um, if you are a pen tester, you should be aware of the MITRE attack as well. If you are a threat hunter, you must know MITRE attack. So again, regardless of your role in cybersecurity, you should understand MITRE attack and you should know what kind of phases or how we call them, tactics, uh, available in MITRE attack. So uh, here's the, the matrix that you may find in if you go to my, MITRE attack website. Let me quickly show you where can we find it. Um, so here we go. So MITRE, uh, attack MITRE.org. That's where you can find this matrix. Um, and you may find number of tactics. So each of those phases, like reconnaissance, resource development, initial access, they called tactics. And each tactic has number of techniques. Oops, sorry, number of techniques. By the way, if you click on the technique, you will find number of sub techniques. Uh, so for example, if I'm going to gather victim identity information, um, sub techniques, and here we have three sub techniques. So credential gathering, email address gathering, and employee names gathering. So again, what you see on the matrix, uh, on the matrix, on the matrix itself, um, will not uh, show you all information available. So you need to click on the technique itself to find out more, like to find out description and to find out sub techniques. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you all of those uh, tactics from left to right, of course, not all techniques. And I, uh, I found like one, two very simple technique for every tactic to show you them as quick as possible because you know we have limited time and we have number of tactics that, we need, that I need to show you. So uh, without being said, let me start from the first tactic called reconnaissance. That's where, uh, that's where attacker start to gather information. So before, bef before attacker will attack, they need to gather some information. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the website. Let me quickly show you attack, my attack. And I'm going to do to, to, to reconnaissance where it was, victim identity. So I'm going to gather something like email addresses. So if I would like to, let's say, send phishing email, I need to know email addresses. So let me show you how attackers may go through this first step by collecting email addresses. So for that purposes, I'm going to go to the website called Hunter.io. And let me make a quick, quick search about EC Council. So uh, let's take EC Council as the example. So ecouncil.org. Now we can see number of emails, by the way, I know some of those guys. Um, so we have we, we see number of emails. Uh, what we can also, so we, we have a chance to find out maybe employee that we want to attack. So if I wanna, let's say attack, attack Philip, um, then I know the email address of Philip. 
Uh, by the way, even if I don't know the email address, if I didn't find the email address, uh, what I can find on the right on the right hand side, I can find email pattern. So based on on the findings, uh, this service tells me about the pattern. So if I know the first name and the last name, um, probably can guess what kind what what is going to be the email address of this person in, in this company. Uh, I can also go to EC Council. Let's find out uh, the email address of, of vice president. So I'm gonna go to about, uh, contact us. Uh, maybe not contact us. Probably they won't publish this email address. Mm, let's say I would like to, 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 to history, find the history of company. Oh, they say that founder is J, J by VZ. All right, so I can try to guess, I can try to guess that email address will be uh, j.bavizi. Uh, it is not, but uh, let me make a first guess. You see council.org. So uh, then I need to verify if this address is, is, is correct. So, because I, just my guess, but especially for top managers, it may not be a case. Quite often, top managers they have like a more simplified email address. Quite often, top managers have something like that, some like like just a name. Uh, all right, so let me mm, let me uh, try to verify if the email address is correct. I'm going to open um, my terminal, and so let me quickly check. Um, and let's look up for this for this domain, uh, and the domain will be ecouncilcouncil.org, and I see that EC Council is using Office 365, so that's Microsoft. I know that it's Outlook.com, so it's Office 365. And I know in Office 365, I can verify username if I try to log in somewhere. Doesn't really matter where. Um, doesn't really matter where. And if user doesn't exist, it will tell me. So let me try to copy and paste. Oh, uh, no. So this email address is incorrect. Incorrect. So what I need to do, I need to try that one. And yeah, it's working. It's working. So this one probably exists. Um, I can also do the same uh, using PowerShell. So it may not only be the, um, uh, the interface. And there are a number of also tools that can automate this process. So let me do the same with PowerShell. And it says true. So yeah, this one, this email address exists. So now I found the email address I want to attack. Of course, I'm not going to do it. Uh, and please also don't attack it because probably there is a high chance you will not see me again. Uh, so. Anyway, uh, so um, I found email address. Now the next step, the next step is to um, go back to slides and take a look at the um, next phase, next uh, tactic called resource development. So what resource development is? Uh, in case of resource development, that's where we prepare uh, infrastructure for the attack and the payloads. Uh, this step I will I will execute very quickly because again um, since I'm I'm showing you demo uh, I don't need to compromise any infrastructure so in my case I will have very simple Linux machine in the cloud and that's what I'm going to really use for the demo uh, but of course in the real world we want to like stay undetected and we want to compromise the environment without being compromised ourselves I mean attackers wouldn't want to do it so what we go, what attackers may, may may need to do they may need to deploy command control center. They may need to compromise another company first and use that company as the proxy. They may need to develop some kind of payloads, uh, so make some developments. What I did here, I just deploy uh, the machine in uh, in the cloud with Linux, with Kali Linux. So let me just log into my virtual machine. And that's it. that is going to be my development. But again, in the real world, of course, it, it takes much more time. All right, next step is going to be initial access. So here we see a number of techniques. One of them is going to be phishing. Uh, by the way, because my attack is trying to cover 
very broad number of attacks uh, on each phase on on each tactic you may find uh, completely different completely different techniques so it may be like a fission or it may be exploit public facing application so it looks pretty different right but the goal of those uh, techniques is to get initial access so what i'm going to do i'm going to use phishing uh, i already sent an email to um gmail account and so let's say user that user is me not jay but let's say i would like to i would like to download this email and yeah and let me close that so that was some kind of phishing uh, now the next step uh, is execution so here attacker is going to execute something on the on the client side uh, and, and again it may be something different it may not always be a client always be a client in my case it, that's the client it may be like container it may be server it may be web application so not always the client um, in, but my demo it will be client so but something that we execute some kind of code execution um, so let's do it so client uh, download uh, XLS file. So let's go to downloads and open it up. It says, damn it, uh, asking for now. Um, it says enable macro. We need that. Like I ask them, I motivate them to enable macro. So before I enable that, let me configure also my uh, my resource. Let me configure Netcat uh, as the listener, and let me click enable content. Hey, come on, click enable content. All right, so I get some discount and I get a shell. So that's where we get um, access to the actual machine of the user. Again, it may be not only user machine, it may be server, maybe may web application, maybe may different things, depends on, depends on the attack, depends on the, on that, on the attack factor. Now, uh, the next step in uh, MITRE attack will be um, my next, next tactic will be persistent uh, persistence so what i need to do i need to find out a way to get back to, to the machine in case of something goes wrong if in case of user re reboot the machine or close the close the application or if we lose connection we need to have a way to get back and of course also cyber attacks it is not something that we can do in a few seconds so we always need to have access to connect back and continue and continue our attack. Um, so persistence. When uh, attacker needs to establish persistence, there are many ways to establish persistence. Uh, so, for example, it may be like a, a service uh, that attacker may create, but it, it requires admin, admin, admin rights. It may be log on, um, so I can like create some shortcuts and and so automatically run them. Uh, so there are many ways to run something automatically. Or attacker can create uh, extra accounts, extra user user accounts, uh, and then we'll be able maybe we'll be able to connect using those usernames. Um, since I'm using Excel to get to to like to get initial access, what I want to do, I would like to use Excel, also Excel, for persistence. Let me quickly show you how it looks like. Let me go back. Let me go back and close that. Close that, um, and let me open Excel. So in Excel, or maybe Word doesn't really matter. Um, if I go to Trust Center, uh, Trust Center, I can find what is called trusted locations. So in every Word or Excel uh, Excel installation, you may find what is called trusted locations. So trusted location, mm, that's the location. If you place document there. Uh, it will run all macros without any questions, without any consent from the user side. Plus, half of those folders that you may find here, they called startup. So it means uh, any document that will be placed into this folder will run automatically. So if I place the, the document to user startup, it means I can place any document without admin rights. It will run automatically and macros will run without any consent. Let, let's let's do it. So let me copy this uh, path.
so it's empty. Uh, let me copy this save today to here. Uh, rename it to blank. Open it up. Oh. Um, open it up. Hey, come on. Wake up. Let me remove all of this. Um, I'm trying to save it. Save. All right, so now it should be, okay. Let me break the shell, uh, clear the screen. And now if, if if I establish one more listener and user just, just open Excel, nothing else. User just open Excel. Let's see what, what will happen. So, of course, they asked me to buy Office. Uh, let me close that. But what happened? I got a shell. Um, of course, I must make a better design. So remove that, all of those colors and all of those numbers. Uh, but anyway, so I got the shell again, and that was persistence. That was persistence. Um, uh, that's where we got uh, uh, persistent access. And again, we should use multiple ways to configure persistence because one way may stop working. So we need to have some kind of extra, extra, extra persistence. So maybe create a few user accounts, or maybe create user account. But more ways, more things you choose, may, may th more things you use, uh, the more noisy uh, it is. So I mean, not, uh, when, I'm, when I say you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you're a pen tester. But if you're on the blue, on the on the blue in the blue team, then then it's not you. It's, that's attacker. Um, so persistence. We got persistence. Now the next step is going to be privilege escalation. Um, privilege escalation. That's where we want to get more privileges. That's a very common thing in a pen test. So any pen tester probably heard a lot about privilege escalation, and that's one of the goals. Um, when we compromise the machine, we want to get higher privileges. So with higher privileges, we can get more. So we want to become um, administrators. How to do it? How to do it? Uh, of course, there, um, there, there's a long process where we need to find out some misconfigurations, something that may lead to previous escalation. <clears throat> uh, not always the case that we, we can find it on, on this machine. So sometimes we need to travel around the network and find out um, some misconfigurations, or maybe network file or file shares on the network with, you know, um, passwords there. Quite often, users love to keep passwords in the, in, 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 in the text files. So uh, previous collation again, there, there's a number of techniques that you may find about previous collation, and of course, a bunch of sub techniques. I would say that's one of the mo the, one of the largest tactics. Um, so quite a lot of things we can we can find there. So let me escalate my privileges, and I will use technique um, uh, create or modify. Uh, no, not system process. Where the services? Uh, no idea what is that. Where where is that? Maybe not on my screenshot. Um, but let me play with services um, to escalate privileges. First of all, let me check my current privileges. I will say I will uh, type who am I. I can see I'm a user with name Jada. Let me type who am I um, groups. Um, and I can see that this user is just a regular user. So there is no, there is no admin rights on the user side. Um, so really, I, I, need, I need to elevate if I want to do something that only admins can do. So how can we elevate? Again, there are a number of articles. If you're a pen tester, probably heard about all of those resources. Um, you can even just type something like Windows, Privilege, Escalation, and you will find a bunch of articles. Um, this one is quite quite, quite famous, payloads, payloads all the things. Um, and so we may try to use that one. Uh, Anyway, 
Oh, yeah. So bunch of bunch of techniques. Um, one of them will be about services. Let me find so unquoted service path. That's one of them. Incorrect permissions in services. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, I create fake service. I create fake service. Um, and this fake service will give me admin permissions. So, of course, in the real world, we need to find it. Quite common tool to do it is called power up. So it will look for different path to uh, for previous collation of the local machine. Um, of course, power up, power up not always can show you everything. So manual manual search also important. Anyway, so um, let me ele elevate my privileges and become administrator. Um, so first of all, let me quickly show you that I really not administrator. If I if I click run as administrator, it tells me that I must provide username and password. So um, let me quickly show you. If I type, let me open PowerShell from here. It will be more visual. Let me open PowerShell. And uh, what I what I did, uh, I created a script that show, shows me all services that runs automatically that must start automatically but do not start so it means that this service has incorrect path probably M maybe other reasons but um, just let me quickly make this search and i can see there is a service called brief ask srv of course i made everything on purpose to uh, make demo quicker because we are limited in time and there are a number of tactics I, I need to show you. Uh, of course, in the real world, it requires more efforts to find out the vulnerability, misconfiguration. Um, so it, 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 might, it might take a while. But here, here I was lucky. So there's a special service that should give me elevation of privileges. So um, let me take a look at the service in more details. Um, get service. First, get service and the name of the service. Um, it says stopped. Uh, let me take a look at the list of the properties. And stopped and it should be, yeah, that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't tell me anything else from here. All right, let me open that in the GUI and let me show the service. So I can see that the path to this, to the executable that must run by this service is this. And log on, uh, and, and this service run as local system. So any executable that will be triggered by this service will run with local, uh, with local system privileges. Let me go to this folder uh, real quick. And nothing here, of course, on purpose. Um, in the keep in mind in the real world is not it's not that easy, but uh, you got an idea. What I want to do, I would like to copy uh, my own executable. All right. So give a name. Uh, pre ask. Uh, SRV. That's it. Now, uh, next up, let me break this shell. Let me establish new new listener, and let me restart the service. Normally, you nor regular user cannot start the service, but regular user can restart the the machine. So normally, if, if we found vulnerabilities like this, we need to restart machine because um, again. Um, user cannot really just stop, stop the service, start, stop, or stop or start the service. For the sake of time, I delegate privileges to this user to only start one service. So for the sake of time, so I don't need the reboot. Let me click, click, click start and wait for the result. All right, I got a new shell. Let's see who am I. System. So now I have full privileges on this local machine. Let me uh, find the host name, um, ECC-CL1. I have full privileges on that machine. All right, let me go back, back to slides. 
And next step, maybe defense evasion. Um, defense evasion, and, and, and in general, next few steps, it is something that we may find multiple times. So defense evasion, I may need to use here when I'm going to dump credentials, or defense evasion I may need to use in um, later on when I'm going to exfiltrate data, or defense evasion can be used somewhere else. So defense evasion and some other steps can be used on a different phases. And if you, if you look, take a look at the defense evasion, you will find so many techniques. Uh, so defense evasion is very broad. It may be like um, some high traces from, uh, from those who make a forensics. It may be uh, antivirus bypass and so on. So there are so many things in defense evasion. It's very, very broad tactic. So um, let me just move to the next step. Uh, will be credential access. Let me take a look. If I need to um, make an evasion of defense, if I'm trying to dump credentials. If not, I will show you defense evasion slightly later. Uh, we'll see. So let me try to dump credentials. And maybe I need to um, some like bypass antivirus um, when, I'm, when I'm trying to dump credentials. So what, what is what credential access is? Credential access, that's the way to uh, get credentials from the local machine. Um, not like maybe, maybe it may be the main credentials, it may be local credentials. Um, maybe I, I dump passwords that's stored in the, um, in the browser, st password stored in a credential manager, uh, or Kerberos tickets. That's again, most of those tactics, they are quite broad. So let me try to dump a um, process called LSAS where uh, it should contain. Um, credentials of local user, credential access. Let me try to do it. Let me try to do it. Um, to do it, uh, first of all, I'm going to use the tool called crossdump. Crossdump from sysinternals. So this tool can be used to like dump credentials. Let me um, I, I, I can I can do it. Um, I can just download this tool, unpack it, and um, and make a dump. Or I can download that. Um, I can download that uh, using PowerShell. So let me just um, download the tool, uh, copy and paste. And open CMD. Oh, sorry, wait a second, That I'm not administrator here. I must use the shell. So let me go here, service, oops. Now, um, prosdom has like some kind of syntax. And so if I wanna use, if I wanna use prosdom to, to, to dump credentials, what I need to do? Um, so first of all, I would like to uh, call prosdom, accept EULA. And I want to dump uh, lsas.exe and I want to place it to the file with name lsas.dmd. Let's try to do it. And it says access denied. All right, so access denied. Um, and I'm a, I'm a local admin, I mean local system. So there may be different reasons for that. So what may be the reason? Maybe antivirus. Um, and now as an administrator, what, I'm, what, I can, what, I can, what I can try to do, I can try to, um, like deal with antivirus. So here I have McAfee antivirus, but it was, I guess it wasn't McAfee. It was Defender because I have two antiviruses here, one in the active mode, another one is passive, in passive mode. Um, so let me try to, 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 to where is the Windows Defender? I think it's System32. So no PowerShell. I forgot the folder name, damn it. It says Defender, where is that? Am I blind? But it should have uh, Antivirus Defender. Um, let's try Windows Defender. Nope, wait a second. Um,
Oh, sorry. My, my bad. It's in program files. Uh, yeah, Windows Defender. So what I want to do, I would like to go to this folder and, oh, not, not this one. Um, I go to this folder and let's see if I can do something with antivirus. So um, there's a chance. I cannot promise you that, but I will try. I will try to use uh, the tool called MP CMD tool and remove definitions. Minus all. Fingers crossed. All right, failed. Yeah, so um, failed. Um, th it may be the reason for that. Um, so quite common the reason for that is um, feature that built into Windows, feature that built into Windows uh, called number protection, but with uh, third-party antivirus, it should not work, uh, but it's not, not allowing me to do it anyway. So I didn't, I didn't, I, I haven't done it. So the defense uh, evasion didn't work here. I wasn't able to deal with an antivirus, uh, at least at least here, at least for now. Um, so uh, where's my, so I didn't dump credentials. I didn't, I didn't dump credentials um, of this user. So what else I can try to do uh, if I wasn't able to dump credentials? Uh, I can try to, um, maybe, maybe I can ask user. So, uh, so for example, I can, I can call the, um, like help desk support, um, help desk support and say, Hey, uh, dear help desk, um, can you please provide credentials? Because, uh, we need to, um, like you, you user forgot, forgot the name. So please provide credentials. Um, so how it can be done? Um, something like, uh, that. Wait a second. Something like that. I'm going to open PowerShell and do something like that. Whoops, did not work. Uh, one moment. Don't like one demo, do not work. Oh, sorry. Um, there's an extra word. Shouldn't be there. Nope. No. All right. So it's not working. Okay. So one one step has failed, and it's not working for me, unfortunately. Oh, it's working, not from PowerShell, but from uh, from CMD. Don't ask me why. It just it should be the same, but anyway. So let me just use different username, different username, and let me do it again. So uh, now asking me for the username should be M Smith here, um, and so we ask like, hey. Um, can you please type the credentials and user should call the help desk and say, Hey, it's asking you for your username. Can you please help? And if uh, we type that, um, then in CMD, it should show me the results of those passport. Anyway, so I was able to get credentials. I was able to get credentials of user that I need, that I need. And next step maybe is to, uh, with those elevate credentials to make additional discovery. Um, so, because with this username, I can do more. I guess if that was uh, it was that that was a help desk engineer, I can do more. I can try to uh, gather more information. Um, so that's the step discovery. Also, the step discovery can be done uh, multiple times uh, before or after uh, this uh, th th this this time period. So I may need to make a discovery uh, before previous collation. To find out what users are available, what credentials are available, I may need to make a discovery um, even later on. So again, that's that's the step that we need to uh, repeat quite often. 
queues. That's, that's where we get gather more information. And you can also see that discovery contains number of techniques. It may be account discovery, so I can look for more users. I can look for um, like cloud services, browser information, application, um, oops, sorry, that's too early. Uh, network share discovery, password policy discovery, and so on. So again, many discoveries. Um, again, with elevation, we can do it more. We can do more. We can do more. Uh, so, but even here, uh, with the regular username, with, with the regular user credentials, I can do different things like net user, net user. I can see local user now. All right, so, but this is the main, so let me type the main. I can see three domain users, so msmith, uh, jdo, which is my user, and trainer. By the way, this step may be very useful before um, I try to get credentials, because I must know which user I need to get, and so um, I may need, may, may need to use this username. So I can find out users, um, I may need to find out net, uh, let's say group slash domain. I can see the main uh, domain groups. Let me try to find domain admins net uh, group domain oh, domain admins slash domain. Uh, now I can see who is the member of the main admin groups and so on. So uh, that's that's quite broad thing, but we need to gather more information. So we found the user uh, M Smith. Uh, we also have credentials of user M Smith. Uh, we can also try to find um, other machines available, uh, network shares, and so on. So try to gather as much information as we can. So on the next step, is lateral movement. So now we have credentials. We know that we have some kind of other machines around and we would like to um, jump to another machine or to another network. So to gather more information, uh, to get something else or maybe to find documents we need. So lateral movement means that we, we are going to pivot um, across the network, around across those networks um, and try to find more uh, more information. So lateral movement, it may be something very, very simple. So even if I use a remote desktop protocol, RDP, that's still lateral, lateral movement. Of course, maybe PowerShell, it may be PSExec, it may be something like VNC. So uh, many ways, many ways, not, not only RDP. So let me do something simple like, like PowerShell. Let me just clear the screen. Um, and I would like to... PowerShell. I would like to create a new session. Um, new PowerShell session. And of course, I need I know, I know the password, so let me type the password. All right. And now I want to enter the SP. Oh, by the way, let me just change the font for you. And I would like to enter PS session. So now I uh, now I connected to another machine called ECC CL2 with M Smith credentials. Let's take a look. Who am I? I'm a user M Smith here, and who am I? Who am I with groups? And I can see that this user is administrator. So finally, we found some kind of administrator uh, on another machine. Let me for simplicity jump using RDP, another lateral movement, lateral movement technique. And next one will be collection. Again, so we we may need to use, we might we may, may need to repeat defense evasion, lateral movement, a discovery multiple times until we find what until we found what we need. Because um, of course, in my demo environment, I'm trying to make it as quick as possible. We have four minutes left till Q&A. Um, I'm trying to show you everything as quick as possible. Um, I'm, it's quite quick. But of course, in the real world, you will not find what you need immediately. So you need to do it multiple times unless you, until you found what, 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 you, what you're looking for. So collection, that's where we're going to take data we're looking for. 
And again, if you're looking at if you look at the techniques, it may be very broad amount of data. It may be like audio capture or clipboard data um, or many different things. So because again, we, our goal may be screen capture, video capture, and so on. Uh, but again, for the, I'm trying to find the most simple technique to show you. And it will be archive collected data. So something like if I'm looking for documents, I can archive them so for, for, for easier and better exfiltration. So let me go to the machine. Um, so here are here's the folder called sensitive. So here's a lot of sensitive gibberish documents. And let me quickly archive them. Um, let's call it the sense. Now, so um, I collect some documents I want. Uh, now we need to establish some kind of connection to my um, to my command control center. I already have it. I already have a connection to command control center with my custom tool. Uh, but be because the, again, uh, we can have different attacks, um, different attack, attack vectors. We may not have established connection um, to command control center. So what I want to do right now, I would like to configure. Sit, uh, connect to my command control center. Uh, to do it, I will use tool called Netcat. Netcat. Uh, let me open one more window. Or I can use that one. I can just break this shell. Let's use 4444. So let me use Netcat. And that's where I probably need to uh, make an evasion. So let me copy Netcat. Uh, Page to desktop. Yeah, antivirus said that it found some threat. Um, so what I want to do, I would like to open hex editor. Uh, um, make some modification to Netcat. Uh, let's change that to something like that. And save. Uh, one more copy. Let's call it NC hyphen ECC. This one, oh, that the XD, of course. This one should bypass antivirus, I hope. Oh, no, not 3D. Or it's still the same thread. So let me go to desktop and let's try to, oh no, that was that was killed by antivirus. Um, let me take my previous one, which used to work, I think. Uh, no, it's not here. All right, one more time, if not working, sorry, but we have limited time. Um, let me make some other changes, but probably, this one, let me just use something like that. And fingers crossed. Nope, defense evasion didn't work, did not work. All right. Not that uh, defender became smarter. By the way, about defense evasion. Um, so that was the public tool. Uh, that was a public tool. But I have my own tool, which we, which you saw before. So again, if public tool is important, let me use my own tool. Um, so let me copy that. <clears throat> Antivirus doesn't complain, um, and and if I run it, I should get a shell. Yeah, I have a shell. So I established connection to a command control center, um, and now the the last step will be exfiltration. So now we need to oh not what two last steps. I need to get uh, data out. Get data out from the from the machine. Um, there are ma many ways to do it. One of the most common ways nowadays is to transfer data to cloud account, and ideally, 
to uh, stay undetected, like to um, not really und be undetectable, uh, but decrease the number of um, like make, make it less, less suspicious. We can use the same cloud uh, cloud that this company use. If I know that this company use, let's say, Dropbox, um, I upload data to my own Dropbox. So in that case, um, for the company, it will not be very suspicious if I use some kind of unusual cloud service, if some un unusual cloud service was, was used uh, and was used in, in logs. So let me avoid to using this tab, you know, that we need to upload archive to the cloud. Um, but there are many other ways to do it. Copy over RDP, copy over um, Netcat, uh, and so on. Finally, the la one last step is impact. Now I need to um, um, like cover the traces um, and look. So like um, dest destroy data, remove accounts, encrypt data, make a defacement of website, wipe the disk, and so on. So what I want to do, I would like to use ransomware, uh, my own ransomware, um, to encrypt the data. Also would be a nice idea not only to encrypt data, but also encrypt logs. But let me just encrypt the, the data here. So if I want to make some money, I have a copy of their data and I encrypt existing, existing data. So. So that's my run somewhere. Let me run it real quick. Um, I would like to encrypt a folder called sensitive and the password, let's say one, two, three. By the way, it's only encrypting uh, Word documents, so I should ignore my zip archive. Nope. Uh, yeah, nothing not ignored. Um, so now um, everything's, everything's encrypted, including my copy. Um, and so, of course, um, data is available only to, to, to those who has a copy. Because even if I rename it, it's still encrypted. So I will not be able to open it. So uh, that was the last step of MITRE attack, um, like la last phase, last, last tactic of MITRE attack. Let me go back to the, the whole matrix. Um, here you, so the previous like 40, 45 minutes, you saw all of those uh, tactics of MITRE attack from reconnaissance to impact. What is important, regardless of your role, again, I, I, I told you that before, regardless of your role, you should understand um, those tactics and different techniques. If you want to learn more about them, just go to MITRE ATT&CK website, like attack.mitre.com.org, click on the tactic, click on the technique, and they give you full um, description of the tactic and technique, and even sub-techniques. So uh, yeah, they don't have demos, but at least they describe it pretty well, what this tactic and what this technique is all about. So uh, that was the goal of this session, is to give you a look and feel of all of those tactics. Uh, not, of course, all techniques, not possible. Uh, defense evasion, unfortunately, didn't work for, for, for us. Defender antivirus became smarter than, than it used to be when I prepared this session. Um, so defense evasion wasn't that, that easy. So um, let me jump to the last slide about Q&A and let's take a look at questions if you have them. Thank you, um, Sergey. Actually, uh, we have so many feedbacks in our question bag. So uh, before we jump into our uh, Q&A session, uh, today's webinar is in sync with our CEF certification. EC Council's CEH maps to many ethical hacking roles in the industry, like security analyst, uh, analyst um, information security analyst, certified ethical hacker, security consultant, site administrator, and network management executive. Anyone with CEH certification is eligible for 18,000 plus number of immediate job openings with an average salary of 90,000 
to $110,000 per annum. If you are interested to know more, kindly take part in the poll, which is going to conduct right now. Uh, now, um, Sergey, you can take the Q&A. Um, do I have access to Q&A? Because um, I'm looking at the chat and I don't see anything. I have actually shared. Eh, where is that? Sharing attendees. I can see the chat. Um, I have. Yeah, I um, I have actually sent it to you. Okay, so uh, message by, one by one. All right. So the first message would be nice as well if you can show us how to protect ourselves or the organization for from this attack techniques. Um, I, it sounds like an idea for the next webinar, for the upcoming webinars, I guess. Um, I, I hope you don't like, you're not expecting that I'm going to show it to you here right now because it will take a few more other hours. Is there any roadmap or classification of attacks used based on protocols or misconfiguration? Um, official like well-known i don't know but there are a number of resources when when you uh, like if you're doing doing a pen test and you found like oh there's an open port um like let's say smb all right google what we, what we can do with if smb port is open and then you, you you will find number of attacks um and possible misconfigurations but something like MITRE ATT&CK, some like this well-known uh, and de facto standard based on the protocol, um, I don't know anything like that. So how MITRE ATT&CK TTP's framework plays a role in threat mitigation and counter attacks? Great question. So first of all before you pre before you configure protection you must know how things can get can, can go wrong um and so here you, if you, you if you go to miter attack you go to miter attack um you can um let's say let's click let's click on the execution and let's say i would like to to to, to click on the malicious file so we can read about that, uh, what's going on, and scroll down, 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 down. And here we can find mitigations and detection. So that may be what first idea. That's maybe a first year idea. They, they also tell you how to mitigate that. Second idea, you probably know, maybe you heard, that MITRE also had another frame, framework called DEFEND. So that's only about protection. So first of all, you may start you may start from MITRE attack uh, tactics and take a look at the mitigation detection, how, how to detect and how to mitigate, and then jump to the to defend to see more details about protection. So next question: How to start making use of MITRE in a day-to-day -day security incident investigation? I would say the first idea would be to have the SIM system that integrated with MITRE attack. Yeah, I know it's not 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 easy to do, get it right away, but normally SIM system nowadays, like if you're using like well-known on the market SIM system, it should have some, have, have, have integration with my with my third attack. So when you see the incident, it must also show you like a, um, tactics and maybe even techniques uh, involved into this incident. So. Uh, but of course, if your if your SIM system doesn't have it, then what you need to do, you need to manually figure out uh, what it was. And, and oh, the most important, yeah. So about, about that, when you see some kind of tactic, when when you're like in, in like when when you have yeah, when you investigate incident, when you see some kind of tactic, let's say, uh, let me go back to to, to 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 all of those tactics. Let's say you found, uh, let's say previous previous collation or like, persistence. So if you, if you found persistence, then probably something was before. So it was some kind of execution, uh, initial access. Um, so you can assume 
that something happened before that and this, and something may happen after this like previous collation defense evasion and so on so when you see, when when you, when you find when when you find some kind of evidences that there is a like um the event with persistence or let's say credential access you you may, you may you may need to start looking for the previous events because something had to happen before and the last question is there's a training lab setup you know or for practicing red blue team techniques when it comes to the mitra attack framework mm, no i don't know anything i deployed this lab uh, i mean this demo myself for you today um so yeah that that that, that that's that's I, I don't know anything I, any 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 specific pre-configured uh, lab environment uh, to demonstrate or try my attack um at least the whole framework it, it probably it will it won't be the uh, so there, there are a number of things you may find like you know demonstration of sim system like uh, sentinel from microsoft or splunk and of course when you play with those systems um, you may find some kind of incidents that are related to one of the tactics or mul multiple techniques but i don't know any labs that will show you all of those phases all of those tactics from 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 reconnaissance to impact all right seemed like that was the last question let me jump back to q a all right so <clears throat> Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Sergey, for answering the questions. Uh, it was actually a very informative session, and it was a pleasure to have you with us. And we are looking for more and more sessions with you. So before we conclude, can you please, do you have any uh, like message for our audience? Good question. Uh, do you have any choices? Choose the first message, <laughs> second message. All right. So, um, um, since this session, since that session about MITRE attack, of course, uh, I encourage you to take a look at that too. The go to MITRE dot, oh, sorry, attack dot MITRE dot org. Of course, you will see a number of things like oh, many tactics, many techniques, and uh, you may get lost because of one of the goals of my demo was to just uh, sort the bit in, in your head. Uh, but little by little. If you start to, especially if your if your job role related to some kind of uh, instant handling and so on, investigation, uh, just start to take a look at the tactics, um, and and try to find them in the real world. And then after you understand the tactics and all of those life cycle, you may take a look at the techniques with more details. Because all the things I showed you, you may find on the MITRE attack. So persistence, yeah, there's a persistence about office, um, fission, of course. Uh, user email reconnaissance, yes, all of this you may find on the MITRE attack. So start working with MITRE attack, but start small because if you just start to click on the, all of the links, you may get lost pretty quickly. Uh, take a look at the tactics first, uh, each tactic, and then and, and try to find out them in the real world, and then start to go deeper into techniques. Thank you so much, Sergey, for your message to our audience. So before we end the session, I would like to announce our next cyber talk session, which is navigating the changing landscape of information security leadership best practices is scheduled for uh, 24th of August, 2023. The session is a panel discussion. To register for this session, please go to our website which is www.eccu.edu slash cyber dash talks the link is given in the chat section hope to see you all on 24th of august with this uh, you may disconnect your line thank you so much for joining us bye bye thank you